Hey everyone! Well, we're almost done with our complex numbers unit. We've added and subtracted complex numbers, and we've multiplied complex numbers. So let's talk about what happens when you divide complex numbers. And it's going to turn out that we pretty much do the same thing with dividing complex numbers that we did with dividing by radicals. And that shouldn't be a big surprise because the imaginary unit i is a radical, isn't it? It's the square root of negative 1. So let's talk about what we did when we actually um, divided by radicals. Remember when we had a problem like, let's say I had 2 over the square root of 3. Do you remember what you did? Yep, you multiplied by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. We rationalized the denominator. We made it into a rational number instead of an irrational number. 2 times radical 3 was 2 radical 3. And radical 3 times radical 3 is 3. That's what we did. Well, it turns out you do the exact same thing with complex and imaginary numbers that you did with radicals. Because as we said, the imaginary unit i is a radical. So whatever you would do with radicals, you would also do with imaginary numbers. So what if I had, let's say, 2 over 5i. Well, if this had been a radical, we would have said, well, we multiply top and bottom by the radical that's in the, in the denominator. That's what we're going to do here, too. The radical in the denominator is i. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by i. We're doing the exact same thing we did with radicals, but in this case, the radical is i. 2 times i is 2i over 5i squared. But we said that when we have an i squared in the previous video, that just means we take off the i squared and change the sign. So my answer here is 2i over negative 5. Now what we really want to do, if we were being really good about this and writing this in proper form, we would probably write negative 2i over 5. Right? That would be a better way to write the answer. Please remember that whether you have this, this is just an example, or this, all th both of those are equal to this. Okay, It doesn't matter where the negative sign is, but technically when we write a negative fraction, we usually write the negative out in front. For our purposes here, we're going to leave that alone. That's perfectly okay. So if you gave me that answer, that would be fine. Let's look at another example. How about if I had 6 over 2i? Well, what do we do? We multiply by i over i, 6 times i is 6i, over 2i squared. But again, 2i squared is negative 2, isn't it? Right? Take off the i squared, change the sign. But one other thing we need to watch out for is right here. Please make sure when you do division, just as we did with radicals, if your whole numbers can be reduced, they need to be reduced. 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3i. So my answer for this problem, this problem right here, 6 over 2i, can be simplified to negative 3i. Let's do another problem. What if I had 3 over negative 8i? Well, I would multiply by i over i. That's 3i over negative 8i squared. We have an i squared. That means we get rid of the i squared and change the sign. Your answer is 3i over 8. Okay? Let's get a little more complicated, shall we? How about 2 plus 4i over 6i? What am I going to do? I'm going to multiply by the radical, the denominator, i over i. On the top, I'm going to distribute, aren't I? This is just like we did with radicals. 2 times i is 2i, and then 4i times i is 4i squared. And on the bottom, I have 6i times i, which is 6i squared. I think you know what to do next, don't you? you got a couple of i squareds there to deal with. And what's the rule that we talked about? The rule is you take off the i squared and change the sign on the number. So this is going to be 2i, what do we got here? Minus 4, that's right, over 6i squared would be negative 6. Okay, a couple more things to deal with here. The first thing is you should notice something wrong with the denominator. Do you notice it? 
You should because complex numbers should be written in A plus BI form, standard form. So this really should be written negative 4 plus 2i over 6. There's one other problem. I hope you see it. And that is all three of my whole numbers. And again, it has to be every whole number in the problem is divisible by 2, isn't it? These can be reduced. As long as every whole number, as every term in your answer can be divided by a common factor, you need to do it. So let's divide each one of those by negative 2. Um, excuse me, by 2. So we get negative 2. Oh, I forgot a negative here, didn't I? Okay, so that's negative 2 plus i over negative 3. Okay, I'm okay with that answer. It's not actually the best answer, but I'm okay with that answer. Let me explain to you how this answer is usually written. You might see in textbooks this written another way. Usually we don't like having negatives in denominators. It's just not the nicest looking answer. So frequently what you'll see done in books and online is that you change all of the signs in the problem. So you get this instead. It's a much prettier looking answer than this answer, isn't it? Okay, so that, if you see this, don't get confused. It's just getting rid of that negative in the denominator by changing all the signs. The other thing you will see done is this. Divide both things by 3. 2 divided by 3 is 2 thirds minus, and then we've got a 1 in front of the negative, and 1 in front of the i, so we have minus 1 third i. If you take a look at that for a minute, I hope you'll see why that's actually a finally the finally the best answer for this problem. And that is because this is actually in A plus BI form. This is in standard form, where my A is 2 thirds and my B is negative 1 third. Of all of the answers I've written here, these three answers, this one here is the actually the best answer to the problem. But what I'm telling you is for my purposes in my classroom, this answer here, this first answer I gave you, is acceptable. Again, not the best answer to the problem, but it's acceptable. This, would, this answer right here is the most mathematically correct answer in terms of writing it in standard form. I hope you might also notice that for this problem here, we could actually have reduced this right from the very beginning, couldn't we? We could have written this as 1 plus 2i over 3i right from the top and it actually would have saved us a step. Actually wouldn't have saved us a step. We're only doing the we're doing the reducing earlier rather than later. Okay? Now now we're going to get a bit complicated. And that is what if you have a binomial in the denominator? And you should remember these from when we did um, radicals. What if I have five over six plus six i? Do you remember what we did with these? When we had radicals, let me erase that. Let's make that look a little better. When we had radicals and we had two terms in the denominator, what did we do? We multiplied by the conjugate. And the conjugate was the exact same two terms, and we changed the sign between them. So we're going to do the same thing with our complex numbers. We're going to multiply by the conjugate of our denominator. And not surprisingly, these are sometimes called complex conjugates because we're taking the conjugate of a complex number. That should make sense. Now we're going to do our multiplication. We're going to distribute here on the top. That's 5 times 6 is 30. 5 times negative 6i is minus 30i. Now you have two choices on the bottom. You can either FOIL these, or you can remember that what you really end up with in the denominator is a difference of squares. Let's look at it both ways. Let's FOIL it first. 6 times 6 is 36. My outside term, 6 times negative 6i, is minus 36i. My inside term, 6i times 6, is plus 36i. And my last term, 6i times negative 6i is negative 36i squared. OK, 
Okay, I hope you can see that my middle two terms, as they should with difference of squares, cancel out. And if I have a 36 I, negative 36i squared, we take off the i squared as we have been doing. Change the sign, this becomes plus 36. So what do I have? I have 30 minus 30i over 36 plus 36 is 72. Am I finished? Nope, I am not finished with this problem because I have a common factor in all of my three whole numbers. And again, it needs to be in all the whole numbers. 30, negative 30, and 72 have a common factor of 6. So let's divide them all by 6. We get 5 minus 5i over 12. That would be an acceptable answer. Okay, again, you might see this written as 5 twelfths minus 5 twelfths i, dividing both pieces by 12 to put it in standard form, but for our purposes, that's perfectly okay. Again, let's talk about difference of squares here. What we really had in the denominator was a difference of squares, and the difference of squares means all I have to do is square both terms and subtract. 6 squared is 36. That's my first term. My second term is 6i. 6i squared is minus 36i squared. Change it to a plus 36 and I get 72. I hope you can see that all you're really doing here, all you're really doing when you do the difference of squares, is you're skipping this um, elimination of the middle two terms. That's all you're really doing when you do difference of squares, but I think it's much easier and much faster to do the difference of squares. Um, let's do another problem. Actually, let's do a couple more problems because these can be tricky. Spend a little bit of time with these. How about 7i over negative 4 plus 2i? Okay, let's take a look at this. We have two terms in the denominator. It's a binomial. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of that denominator. Conjugate just means we change the sign in between. Don't change the one in the front. Just change the one in between. So we're going to multiply negative 4 plus 2i times negative 4 minus 2i. Let's see what happens. 7i times negative 4 is negative 28i. 7i times negative 2i is negative 14i squared. So far, so good. And then let's do different squares this time. Negative 4 squared is 16 minus 2i squared, which is, there's an i there, 4i squared. You can FOIL it if you want. I prefer to do it the easier way, and that is just to do difference of squares. Now change my i squared terms. Take off the i squared and make it uh, change the sign. So this is negative 28i plus 14. And on the bottom, what do I have? I have 16 plus 4, which is 20, right? Let's rewrite my top so it's in proper form. That's 14 minus 28i. And on the bottom, I have 20. You're saying, no, no, we're not finished. I hope that's what you're saying anyway. 14, negative 28, negative 20, uh, positive 20. They're all even numbers, right? They're all divisible by 2 at the very least. And that's what they're divisible by. So we're going to divide everything by 2. 7 minus 14i over 10 would be my best final answer here. Okay? But again, remember, you cannot reduce unless every whole number is divisible by a common factor. I want to do one more problem, and that's this one. 10 plus 6i over negative 5 minus 7i. I want to do this one because it's going to have a binomial both in the numerator and in the denominator. Let's multiply by the conjugate of the bottom, my complex conjugate, which would be negative 5 plus 7i, wouldn't it? Okay, 
So what do we got? We've got a foiling problem on the top and a difference of squares on the bottom, or even a foiling problem on the bottom if you prefer to do it that way. Let's foil the top first of all. 10 times negative 5, my first terms, is negative 50. So far so good. Outside, 10 times 7i is 70i. Inside, 6i times negative 5 is minus 30i. And my last terms, 6i times 7i is plus 42i squared. So far so good. Let's do difference of squares on the bottom. So that would be negative 5 squared is 25 minus 7i squared would be 49i squared. We're almost there. And again, if you wanted to FOIL, you could. You would get negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. Negative 5 times 7i is negative 35i. Negative 7i times negative 5 is plus 35i. And then your last terms, negative 7i times 7i is minus 49i squared. And I hope you can see that when we get rid of those la middle two terms, we're in the exact same place we are when we just do difference of squares. Okay, let's change our i squared terms. 42i squared becomes negative 42. Negative 49i squared becomes plus 49. Take off the i squared and change the sign. Let's combine some like terms now. Okay, I've got negative 50 minus 42 is negative 92. And again, I'm doing the real number first because that's what standard form tells us we need to do. And then as far as my imaginary terms are concerned, I've got 70i minus 30i is 40i. And then on the bottom, what do I have? 25 plus 49. Do a little bit of quick mental math there. You get 74, don't you? Okay, so far so good. Do I have a common factor? Sure do. They're all divisible by 2. So let's divide them all by 2. I get negative 46 plus 20i over 37. Not too bad, is it? And then again, our, net, our bottom line, our result has to have no imaginary numbers in the denominator, no radicals in the denominator. That's why we've been doing this the whole time, is to get rid of those radicals in the denominator. Okay, that's how we divide complex numbers and rationalize complex or imaginary denominators. Thanks.